Jasmine and Tom, um, why don't you tell me, us, the viewer, your uh, TM story? I'll help. I'll help you. I'll guide you. But wh why don't we start right at the beginning? Mm -hmm. um, did you both learn to meditate at the same time? Were you on the same course? No. Who wants to tell me the story? I think you can start. Now. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to start. Yeah. Um, so I found out about transcendental meditation uh, in a retro way. Retro? <laughs> retro way. Like a piece of paper? No, no. I found, I found out from, Non-digital? No, I found out from a George Harrison documentary. And I saw George Harrison talk about it. And I thought, oh, that sounds like what I wanted. And what I have experienced in a slight way through creativity, but have never had control over or never had access to that sense. What was he saying? Um, he was explaining transcendence from what I remember and saying that with meditation, uh, he accesses it twice a day. I can vaguely remember. And were you, you, you obviously it's quite a long, well, quite sounded long appealing. Sounded appealing, yeah. What was, did transcendence mean to you? At the time before I had meditated, uh, it was a sense of wonder that was would be those childhood memories that you would hold on to and go back to. There's the the consciousness and transcendence that happens in everybody's life, and I think especially in childhood, because your perception is slightly more open, and those moments that as I grew older became the thing that you questioned, was that a dream? Is it a memory? You know, it was some, something uh, like a reflection of light through a tree or being in a wood, you know, those, those sorts of things. Um, and then later on with performing, that was a very transcendent thing to me and being creative, but day to day, it wasn't, I didn't have it. I was stressed. <laughs> okay, so so you had a memory of a more um, kind of not magical, but a more kind of energized time when you were younger. Yeah, and you wanted that back because you felt like growing up had uh, sort of covered it up. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, and then I, my. Uh, I had a family member who did Transcendental Meditation, so they set me up with Deirdre. Um, at the time, I had two... Well, I still have two young children. My children were, <laughs> my children were really young. Yeah. They were like, not one and one. Uh, I was 23, and I was stressed. Uh, then, in 2014... The, my mother, or the, not my mother, the mother of the children, passed away oh. um, from a heroin overdose. And I found her that day. And then the following months, I, maybe it wasn't diagnosed, but I presume I had some form of PTSD. I had an image which was repeating, and that became a vast amount of my reality. But I knew, oh, I was pretty sure that I had access to the tool that I needed and I contacted Deirdre and she came to my parents house and within microseconds of being given my mantra the image that was repeating on me uh, completely disappeared and even now if I were to be if I were to try to access that it doesn't it's not possible it's completely impossible so within it wasn't even seconds. It was as soon as I was given my mantra. It completely changed everything. And this was 2014? 2014. So that was nine years ago. Nine years ago. That's amazing. Yeah, it was incredibly profound. Um, however, it took me a few years to uh, understand that this practice, you're allowed to do it twice a day. You're allowed to feel that good. I would, I would do meditation 
ceremonially and it would be so profound and I'd go away and think that was enough for quite a, a long period until um, I'm not sure what changed I remember what? you were like I'm so stressed in the afternoon oh yeah I was doing I was doing one <laughs> yeah I was doing one a day when was this this was like 2019 beginning of 2020 I did one a day, and then I, yeah, we went to Rochester one day, and, and I was like, I'm stressed, it's stressful getting the train, and I realized. Should do the second one. Uh. And this is actually when I was like, wow, within one week, Tom was so different, I was like, I need to. <laughs> okay, so, so we need to wind back a bit. So when did you meet? Uh, oh. We met in 2014, Yeah. but we got together in 2019. And so you didn't learn to meditate no. until this point? Yeah, I learned in 2020 in Berlin. But yeah, that I, I mean, Tom was telling me nine or so when we met already about it. And I really like was really into it already. I like, was I was like, yeah, that's that's something I've been looking for my entire life. I tried all different forms of meditating and um, never something really never worked for me. And yeah that that one week when you started doing twice a day it was it was so crazy to see like such a quick change like massive change and i really was longing for that and then i started to yeah i went to the center and what were you so obviously you saw a big change in him when he started doing it twice a day yeah but also like meeting him after but like, yeah, meeting you nine years ago and what you've been through and seeing you how you, how Tom was like able to do things, I was like, this is very impressive. And yeah, how can you like someone's still so sweet and yeah. I I had it I had an intuition at the time that although trauma is imposed on us, there's a certain part of it that's a choice and you can choose not to and as humans we have the tools to not stay in pain you know and we've had the access to this for one thing i'm terrible at is maths <laughs> but it's what since 1955 the no, tm tm yeah and in uh in contemporary consciousness it's so on the edge now isn't it with meditation mm. Mm. and i think it's going to be like it, it will be a beautiful amazing time to certainly get into transcendental meditation because that longing and that need it's the only form of meditation that aligns all of your alpha waves in your brain and enables it to coherently work all together isn't mm. it it's so much it's such a deeper more profound type of meditation and not I haven't tried that many other ones but when I hear other people speaking about them they sound quite difficult mm. yeah that and was transcendental meditation is absolutely effortless with such profound complex effects that um yeah, yeah I mean I, the guided meditation I tried we always say that someone is someone else's voice in your head Mm -hmm. But that's not what you're supposed to have because that's constantly anyway. There. Is this like a YouTube thing or? I don't, I've, I've been, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't know. Like since a teenager, I was looking for a form of release, also linked to trauma, and you know, like just where can I feel, feel, or like where can I? What space is for me there? Where I can have love and blissfulness and just exist and like. Ma managed to survive on this planet so basically and um, I was yeah I was looking for forms and guided meditation was like yeah some CDs or like books or like and then I would just listen I was like oh god this is so stressing me out I don't feel an X I don't I can't let go like why <laughs> yeah like um, it's making you more tense exactly <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah. Yeah, but for me too, the first time I, I, I uh, got my mantra, it was life changing. I 
I remember my text you. I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was so happy. I that was instant? Instant. It was first meditation. And then, yeah, I mean, it was three days. You have to... But it was, it was instant. I was, wow, wow, wow. And um, what did you notice? So, so that was 2020. Yeah. So you've been meditating so was, three years. Yes. What have you noticed since then? Um, I, since I was born, I had like really bad sleeping problems. Like I couldn't sleep really well. And that, I think that's like one of the main things that really changed with TM. I wouldn't say just straight from the beginning. I actually think there was a... Um, I had to unlearn a lot. Like TM learned, teach me how to unlearn a lot of behaviors. And now I feel like, yeah, I can sleep everywhere. I feel like I've, I don't know, yeah. Wait, I lost my path. Where, where was I talking? No, 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 it's, it's good. It's fine. I was just thinking um, when you said, when you say unlearn behaviors, do you mean that, so you, since you've been practicing TM, uh, that you've become more more aware of behaviours that were not being helpful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like TM, we were talking about this earlier, self-love, not too commercial, you were saying it's a commercial usage of word, but I feel like TM really teaches you the true self-love and I would never treat myself anymore the way I would do. That's why those behaviours I would have learned doing growing up, um... I feel like I cannot do them anymore to myself because how can I do this now <laughs> to myself? I, yeah. I yeah, I was listening to a great podcast the other day, and he said, he just said, you know, um, would would most people talk to themselves in 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 a way that they would never dare talk to anyone else? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or like you would not talk to your best friends like yeah, that. Yeah, why would you why criticize would you, yeah. everyone like that? <laughs> no. Yeah. For things like I don't know. Picking up the wrong drink from the fridge. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> so you learnt two thousand fourteen mm-hmm. and it it was it it was a it sounds to me like an almost miraculous PTSD erasure. Absolutely. Um I mean, which sounds like it was definitely worth the money, whatever the money was. But, you know, that was nine years ago. Yeah. Any, what what else have you noticed since since meditating? Um, to doing, going from doing one a day to twice a day. Um, and then three years. Say, for instance, this morning, or just now, Arriving at Brighton Station, been to Brighton Station uh, countless times, and it's like the first time I had been there because my perception of everything is so heightened and my response to things is so heightened as well. Uh, Everything seems far clearer, far clearer, and... uh, Everybody doesn't look like an enemy. (laughs) Nothing stresses me out. I really don't mind if the ticket machine's broken or if there's a queue, the train's late. really don't mind. Because I'm not positioned from a self which is surface, which is open to be so manipulated by its surroundings. I really feel as though... I uh, perceive and act from that place of transcendence that has built up over the years of stricter practice. Is that the right word? Strict. Strict. Um, yeah, regular. Regular practice. It's a little less. Uh... Regular practice. <laughs> 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 it's fine. Strict. It's disciplined or whatever. You, whatever word. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah, I get you. The disciplines it is a deeper conversation. There isn't an introductory thing to TM. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I remember when I learned. I, I I'm starting to kind of. I'm familiar with those your experiences because I I learned when I was nineteen. Right. And I do remember thinking to myself, um, 
and this is not what they told me on the course mm -hmm. I do remember thinking to myself if I just do this twice a day life is going to be okay and so I was actually really disciplined like right. almost unsocially so <laughs> I because I felt by being a highly selfish and doing this thing twice a day I would be better for the rest of the 23 hours mm -hmm. and it definitely ended up being the case yeah and and I I felt a bit like it was almost like if I meditated you know in Harry Potter they mm -hmm. he has the um invisibility cloak so I felt like with TM it wasn't invisibility it was more like a it kind of shielded me from the harshness yeah because mm -hmm. I was obviously rather sensitive and so I was like okay with didn't matter what happened just like you you were saying yeah interesting um okay so uh, we'll go I don't want to leave so <laughs> so you're you've been meditating three years yeah. and uh have you been strict with your practice? Super strict. Uh, it's the most natural thing to me. It's... You never miss one. I've never missed one. Never. Even when I'm super tired or I have to wake up really early or I'm on the plane. Like, I do it everywhere. I think that's also really amazing, actually, that you can do this everywhere. And, yeah, you can adapt it perfectly in your life. So whatever job you do, whatever, mm -hmm. ev anything, it works. And, um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I cannot imagine... Like, I mean, there was some days where I would, like, go to, like, early out and I would meditate after I did something and I was so stressed. And I always say, never again. I do meditate before or, like, before I get on the plane, not just, like, I just need to meditate before I do anything in the morning. It's just crazy. It's crazy how it holds you. It's like... Yeah. Can you... Are you able to kind of go into a little bit bo bo more... Uh, <laughs> Are you able to go into a little more specifics about why it's so important? What what exactly does um, it do for you? I am neurodivergent, so it means that I have struggles with noises or like my surroundings changing. Like I have a lot of struggles with those things. And I think since I've been meditating, it feels like I am, I it's okay. Like I can do this I can be a human <laughs> you know I, I just I can go out of the house and I can take the train and I yeah I can do those things and um it it is the the spe I feel like it's the it's the it's what is it it's the laugh it's the support it's the safetyness I was saying that as well because I used to be so scared to go inside of me or like you know like I was like oh therapy and like I'm too scared what's inside of me but I think with the, like honestly the mantra is just the, I never felt that safe to go inside of me and to get to know myself that well and um, yeah be be very confident in myself and I think that's also what we always say to M really makes you feel confident I think I I was born the day I got my mantra honestly like I, I don't know who that was before it was some <laughs> Some robot. I don't know. <laughs> it's not me. It wasn't me. Amazing. Yeah. Wow, that's so amazing. I love your hearing your stories. <laughs> Thank you. That's really beautiful. So you're a model. Yeah, I'm a right? model actress. Yeah. So model actress. Do you? Does that mean a lot of travel? Yeah. So I'm presuming there's a potential to get overworked and overtired and um, fatigued, or yeah. But I think that's exactly as well. Like the frame of the day is my meditation. And this, if that is happening, I'm good. <laughs> I can do anything. Like, yeah. 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 yeah there's, a, there's a, you know, when, when we first teach people, there's a, I don't know if you remember, there's a, a, a video of Maharishi. It's on the last day and he's talking about, uh, you know, when p people are traveling, they sometimes use it as an excuse not to meditate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, yeah. No, I remember. Do you remember? Yeah, it's yeah. quite funny. <laughs> and he says, uh, oh, 10 o'clock in the night, some bed will be available. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't we have a chair available? And um, But he said, uh, the thing I, because I, that must be what I remembered when I first learned, he said, meditation first, everything else after, which is sounds yeah. like exactly yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. you do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, 
What else? How about the experience of meditating? Can you, would you like to go one by one, describe what does it feel like to meditate for you nowadays? And if it's a nothing, that's all right. Just be honest. I'm trying to get to that point where it's nothing. (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying, but brain. Uh, This is the point. Try not. Oh, okay. Ah, I know, I know. You're trying. No. (laughs) Do we go there? (laughs) Later. (laughs) The puck. Yeah, I get you. Um... I before we go into that, can I can I rebound off what Yasmin was saying? Yeah. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. That's not something. I'm, so I I tell everybody that I meet, see friends about transcendental meditation, and the biggest one that I get is I don't have time. I've got time. I'm so busy. And um, after hearing this a few times, I got this thought if you think that you're too busy to do transcendental meditation then look at the screen time on your phone daily <laughs> look at those hours piling up and reconsider <laughs> you're looking at a phone right now <laughs> 40 minutes 1440 minutes in a day or something right yeah always got time to meditate you can do it anywhere I've done it everywhere. I've meditated in a nightclub once. <laughs> Don't whereabouts? It, uh, in the in, toilet? No, no. It was it was in the uh, cloakroom area where there was no sound. But, um, yeah, aeroplanes, Ubers, yeah. parks, trains, park, train. We mm. hold hands when we meditate. Big pardon? We hold hands when we meditate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah we've been meditating at the same time that yeah. since you've learned haven't you? so in a long distance relationship we would make sure that one sometimes naturally it would happen at the morning one but even some, the evening one we would always do it together at the same time yeah. I think that was a really big bond yeah, yeah. it was definitely and it was a relief to actually be able to love someone because I saw that you were struggling mm. and I knew what you needed, you know? Yeah. And yeah, it allows us much more access to each other. To love. <laughs> to love, yeah, and to understand. Yeah. And uh, I think so much more understanding without words now as well. Why do you think that is? Any any idea how that happens to be? Um, probably the intuition that grows, or just the blissfulness of meditation, clearing out the mess of what romantic relationships are structured around. And sharing the space where we all are connected, I think, like access yeah. to that. Yeah. Okay. So, what's it like to meditate? <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough. It's a tough yeah. one, isn't it? It's actually um, when uh, when you meditate, it's something that you're desperate to convey with words to another another person who hasn't done it, and and really, um, it's what you want to share with words and what the experience of meditation feels like. I know a lot of language, uh, but I think that I had the odd meditation when I was doing it every now and again that was so 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 profound like nothing that I my I had ever experienced and I get a lot of um, creative ideas at the beginning endless actually I mean this is how you basically do all your music now yeah <laughs> really yeah. yeah it all comes in at the beginning yeah. of the meditation yes definitely definitely and I looked up 
and Maharishi told John Lennon, just note it down and then go back to meditating. Mm. But I'm trying to I'm trying to lessen that and uh, transcend more. <laughs> Something How about you? needs to come up. For me, meditate meditating feels like so many things. Sometimes it's just like I remember in the beginning I would have those incredible out of body experience where I was like seeing myself from outside coming into myself or like being I remember once I was on top, my heads are both on top, um, on each other and like elevator feeling, like all those like very Yeah had to travel i had to travel away from this earth for a second <laughs> mm-hmm. and and now i feel it sometimes feels like that feeling when just before you fall asleep that like oh, where everything is just like hold still it's very warm it's like you your breath you don't breathe it's just yeah <laughs> it's just about to and then I think that probably that's maybe before I'm transcend and then I realize I do that and then I'm <laughs> back on some thoughts. <laughs> uh, um, stillness. It sounds like stillness. Yes, yeah, stillness, stillness. And um, yeah, it feels always different. I mean, we, we communicate about it sometimes. Like we used to do it so much more. We were like, that was your meditation. Yeah. I would be so honest about how it made me feel or how it's making me feel now. And I could always see what you were saying, like, this is what could help you like this would be actually so this is what you need yeah and yeah so i would just talk with them and yeah a few friends now have got their mantra and been meditating and they're also very happy about it and yeah my so obviously my goal is all our family all our family we said all our family members all our friends because then it's just an easier life <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> what What are the obstacles to having that family learn? Do you think? <laughs> oh, is that like a long list? I put them out in therapy first, and now they can after a second. What's that? <laughs> I put my family to therapy. Oh, really? First the, 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 that's the introduction. <laughs> I want. I tried to become a teacher to yeah. honestly just to pin them down and force them to. But I guess that's. I'm still going to try and do that. Huh? Well, that's what happened to me. You just want yeah, to do it. No, no, my... Um, so, when did I learn? So I learned when I was 19, and I did teacher mm-hmm. training when I was 26. Mm-hmm. And uh, my parents... So it was it was £6,000 to do that course. Mm-hmm. So it's like residential and everything. Um, my parents gave me £1,000. I had no money. Mm-hmm. Uh, they gave me £1,000. And when I came back, my mum and... My dad goes, okay, we'll get our money back now. You can teach us to meditate. And I was like, ah, yes. Oh, yeah. Nice. So I, I oh. but what was weird was um, taught my dad first mm. and he still does it. So that was like, mm. so when did I teach him? 30 years ago or something. Wow. So he still does it. He only does it in the morning <laughs> and he does it for about 10 minutes. Mm. But he, you know, he does it. He does it. And then my mum. When I finished a course, because I did, I did them two, two separate courses, just individual courses. And at the end, my mum goes, oh, Mark, that was lovely. And, and I always know my mantra's there if I need it. <laughs> what do you think that meant? <laughs> what do you think? Yes. It's like she, some friends of yeah. yours. <laughs> yeah, that's She's the thing. She's never meditated. Hmm. Never meditated. And then just before COVID, we went on holiday. We used to go on holiday, some nice place with them. And she goes, Mark, I was thinking about the meditation. Do you think you could do the course for me again? Because I'd like to start. And I said, yeah, yeah, we've got three weeks doing nothing, of course. (laughs) Nothing, of course. (laughs) You have friends, they have a mantra and they don't use it. Yes, I do. (laughs) (laughs) No, you can can convert people. I I have friends who have mantras and don't use them, yeah. Yeah, it's so sad. It's hard, though. no one likes being told what to yeah. do. No, 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 you can't do that. You've got the magic. I'm good in a model, you know. That's mm. my job. Really? <laughs> no. um, Convince people. <laughs> yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? Um, okay. Uh, do we? I think. Is there any any other, anything else you feel like you you, you want to convey um, to um, the millions of people who are going to watch this? <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I think if, if you're creative uh, and you are having an experience of that being a difficult space, then TM is absolutely for you. It'll just open the door to creativity and the door stays open. My uh, workflow has gone from waiting around for creative ideas to present themselves over months and months and months to just being constant, constant and constantly joyful and pleasurable. And even if I'm producing something that well, won't be used, it's still a peaceful process, which is what creativity should be. And then also don't necessarily believe that there isn't a human that isn't creative, so that's everybody. But yeah, creativity. And intelligent, you always say that. You feel so much more capable of accessing the part of like... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What's your, what, are you a singer-songwriter? Or what's yeah. your... Yeah. yeah. So you write your own songs, mm -hmm. lyrics and music? Yeah. So you do everything? Sometimes. Hmm. Sometimes. Yeah. Are, you, are you solo or a band? Or? Uh, I'm solo. I collaborate with a pianist at the moment. She's much better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so when you say your creativity, you're, you're, you're making... making songs yeah okay it's affected me in different ways as uh, then creative as well i think a big one was reading to uh i always presumed i was dyslexic i think i cheated on my school test a little bit <laughs> not be but i used to open a book and circle around the page and then get overwhelmed and shut it and now i seem to be able to read and understand Shakespeare <laughs> and then this is, it all it all makes perfect sense you know wow I could do with a bit of that yeah. <laughs> Shakespeare's not easy well Shakespeare's not easy yeah true but I guess it's like what you I think it's just also your mind is just so creative and you just have to you knock on to all those like rhymes and you like mm. you just really like you have a really deep understanding of of poetry or writing and i think also that's probably involved with tm so much yeah. so uh, and i think a big a big part of that is actually confidence yeah it gives you the confidence to uh trust your creative instinct and not hold anything back be far more fearless Yeah, I, I wish I would have learned to meditate when I was a teenager. Like, that would... Life-changing. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, honestly, I wish like I would have done that earlier. I that early in my life. Hmm. You, you can catch up. I can catch up. I cannot wait for the 20 years yeah. of being into TM. Oh, God. Yeah, that's so beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. To look forward to the rest of your yeah. life. And yeah. even on the greyest of bus stop rainy <laughs> days, you have 44 minutes potentially of bliss. Mm -hmm. That's a great tagline. <laughs> 44 minutes of bliss. Mm -hmm. It's good. Mm. Yeah. It's a t-shirt. Yeah, I mean, you want it to, no? <laughs> okay. Um, I think we're, I think that's great. Yeah, thank we, you so we, much. No, thank really. you. Thank you. It was really pleasant. Thank that's you. That's really beautiful, actually, Aww. to I hear am. you both speak. I together. hope that we can articulate ourselves enough to help somebody online. <laughs>